I have to go away from the conference floor to find out uh, what people sometimes really think and I think there is a bit more worry, a bit more concern about what might be happening down the line in the next six months on cost of living, on the uh, national insurance increase but certainly Boris Johnson set out an optimistic v uh, vision and one that was designed I think to try to keep that big coalition of voters that gave him this thumping 80 seat majority in 2019 together big emphasis on levelling up and in any leader's speech I think they try to leave you with a, a memorable phrase for uh, Tony Blair of course it was education, education, education. It was NHS, three letters for David Cameron, for Boris Johnson it was skills, skills, skills. And I'm joined with a couple of people who are going to be analysing that, Katie Balls from The Spectator uh, who's been on the conference fringe and Phoebe Asanagic Wakefield from the Liberal Conservative think tank uh, Bright Blue. But Katie can I turn to you first. Um, Boris Johnson set out a vision of a country it really did need to be levelled up. He said it was a disgrace our transport links were so bad. He said we were one of the most imbalanced economies of any rich country. Uh, who on earth has been in power for the past 11 years? Yeah, it was classic Boris Johnson in many ways. And I think one way in particular was almost how he managed to shake off uh, and disown uh, previous years of Tory rule, which is what we saw at the 2019 election. Um, that pitch there was very much as though this is a new government, it's different to anything that came before. And I think when we're looking at the speech, I think Boris Johnson gave a feel-good speech. I think it you know, rallied his base. I think it was fairly light in terms of policy. It was big on rhetoric. And I think we got to remember this is the first time there's been an in-person conference since that majority of 80 Boris Johnson won so I think it was partly about reminding his supporters why he is an election winner and also trying to remind them that he is the Conservative there's been some worry about this move to the left uh, taxes going up and you could see a few efforts there to say well actually look I'm doing this and you can see how Thatcher might have done similar and try and play in that sense. Yes, no, he did. He did actually mention that Mrs. Thatcher, of course, and at least his ambition to be a low-tax Conservative, but we do have the highest tax burden since 1949. He had to justify that, and that wasn't the bit of the speech that got the biggest cheer, was it? No, it wasn't, and I think it is a tricky uh, place for Boris Johnson to be. We're at a conference where clearly he has asserted his power. I think the fact Boris Johnson gave his speech, you know, in a bigger room than any of his ministers, uh, one that they weren't allowed in, you know, it was just showing that he's, you know, dominant in terms of his position. Um, but that doesn't mean not disquiet and I think what's interesting about the speech was it didn't touch too much on cost of living and some of the really big problems that we could start to see more and more of in the coming months um, and I think that those problems need new answers and this was more about you know playing uh, you know the same lines with a, you know, a few more colourful phrases. I suppose I would say that you know, in the budget and the spending review you'll get the proper decisions and that's why they could be policy light at the moment but there is that disquiet isn't it amongst some of the activists some of the councillors as well not so much about this conference they're delighted to meet them uh, each other face to face again but worried perhaps about what happens six months down the line. Yeah and I think we can see it Boris Johnson this week talking about labour shortages and how it's actually going to drive up wages um, dismissing fears over inflation and there are lots of people in his cabinet who are very worried about inflation I think the chance that Rishi Sunak being one of them. Um, so, you know, can Boris Johnson continue to defy the laws of political gravity, you know, keep doing, uh, you know, things as he wants, or is actually, uh, you know, events are going to catch up with him and we're going to see quite a difficult cost of living crisis, which I think will be quite hard for Boris Johnson in terms of how he approaches political problems um, to deal with. And I don't think the conference speech answered that, even if it did make the supporters uh, feel good. Thanks, Katie. Katie Balls from uh, The Spectator and Phoebe from Bright Blue. Um, one of your colleagues at Bright Blue, the, the think tank, said that this isn't the right time to be taking away the universal credit uplift. That's disappearing this week. He didn't mention that at all in his speech, did he? No, he didn't. And, you know, Bright Blue have been very clear that it's absolutely the wrong move. But, you know, we saw Boris speak very emotively, very passionately about regional inequalities that he wants to fix with levelling up, about wasted cost of human potential. And that's brilliant, but it really doesn't chime with the decision to remove the benefit uplift, which is of huge importance to thousands of families in Britain. And what about the, the tone of the speech? As I say, it was you know, done very well in the, the specially built auditorium, the Boris Auditorium. But some people are saying actually it doesn't quite resonate with how people feel outside the conference bubble. No, definitely. I mean, Boris wanted to use it as a reset opportunity. You know, he's very much been the pandemic PM on the back foot, reacting to crises, you know, being overtaken by events. But he wants to be the levelling up PM and he wants, you know, wants the speech to be cheerful and optimistic. But as you say, outside the conference centre, there are food shortages, there are labour shortages, there are fuel shortages. These things carry serious political cost. 
and clearly it has to be able to address that as well. I mean, let's let's just touch on something which Katie mentioned as well, and uh, and, and I put to the Chancellor in fact last night at a fringe meeting uh, was whether there are fears also about inflation because if wages go up but not as a result of higher productivity or, or new skills, that is a big risk, isn't it? It is a risk, and it'd be interesting to see how Boris handles that. He is quite details light, perhaps infamously a details light politician. Um, and we saw that in the speech as well. I mean, very, very light on policy. The only policy announcement we saw, which was the levelling up premium for teachers. And I mean, it's a one-off payment of £3,000. Yeah, and it was announced already in 2019. I mean, is there, nothing, is there nothing new that they have to announce? Yeah, a bit disappointing, really. OK, we're going, always going to finish there, but I'm going to ask both of you, actually. He, I mean, someone said earlier to me, he's, he's a great showman, so um, there's some very memorable tons of phrase. What was your favourite Boris Johnson phrase for the speech? I'm going to go for build back beaver just because I like the image of all these rewilded beavers gambling around in Britain's rivers. It is, it's a very happy image. And uh, Katie? Yeah, I mean, I think that was one of the most striking. I think some of his attacks on Keir Starmer, so, you know, saying he was this bus conductor, um, you know, he didn't know what he was doing, and then also comparing him to, you know, a, a pirate. Um, I think some of that will have, um, you know, up the ante from Keir Starmer suggesting Boris Johnson was a trivial man last week. Yeah, so there was a little bit of culture war, wasn't there, actually? Yeah. He said, um, you know, he talked about... Uh, uh, what was it, the powder rooms of North London uh, dinner tables? That was, a, that was a bit close to the edge, wasn't it? Yeah, you could see Boris Johnson actually moving towards cultural issues in a way that in the past I think he's been a bit cautious of, and, and I think that is something to watch for, particularly also, I mean, you know, working from home, the government getting much more bold about taking a stance against that now. So I think a more confident Boris Johnson means that we're going to get, um, you know, some forays into these areas. Great, thanks very much. Katie Bowles from The Spectator, Phoebe Asanajic, Wakefield from Bright Blue, the Liberal uh, Conservative think tank uh, analysing that speech and uh, as I say speech went down well here but the true test will be what happens out there with the wider electorate.